Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're doing a how to set up your digital scanning rig, and this is in collaboration with Valoi. You'll see a lot of Valoi products here, but that doesn't mean that their steps that we will show here won't work with any other uh, scanning holders, mask, or rig that you want to build yourself. So, to the basics. First thing you'll need when you want to digitize your film is something to hold your digital camera uh, sturdy and tight. So. The most common thing is a reproduction stand like the one we have here. This one comes from a, you know online store, pretty inexpensive. There's multiple options. Of course, you can go over you know, for the very, very nice ones, but usually get something in the middle that will be stable and not break the bank. Then you also can use a tripod with a column pointing uh, you know, horizontal or even with the camera pointing down if you can. But just remember you need a sturdy, uh, you know, item to hold your camera on top of the Valoi Advancer film holder or so on. For a camera, you can be using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera like we're using now, or I'm using a Canon EOS RP, but please use a camera with manual settings so you can actually give it the exposure value you want and the focus you want, and you can also exchange the lens. For lens, there's multiple options. Usually macro lenses are what is recommended, you can use in larger lenses if you want to have like a very, very good setup. But manual uh, macro lens is the best option to go. I have a 100 mil here. Depending on what size of film you want to scan, you might want to add a 50 macro or a 60 macro or a 100 macro. That will determine how high your camera has to be on top of your rig. So you grab your camera, you grab your tripod plate if you do have the option. Some of the reproduction stands will have a screw on the reproduction stand, so you might have to like find an adapter, but you screw on your tripod plate uh, tight, okay? You don't want things moving when you're digitizing film because that's the worst part. You'll get very shaky and blurry negatives if things are not tight. So you tighten your plate, and then you basically have to put it on your reproduction stand Try to make sure it has some sort of locking mechanism, that way it won't just fall while you're scanning. And then for the height of the camera, you should have your negative holder here, camera on, and so on. But let's go through the steps one by one. So once you have the camera set up, you're basically gonna have your holder. In this case, we could use a directly a holder that goes under the camera. You wanna level the camera and the holder together. They don't have to be uh, perfectly flat like with a bubble. They just need to be perfectly parallel, and for that we use a mirror. In this case, we have a little Valoi mirror, which is still in beta phase, but you can get a little mirror for makeup and so on, as long as it's flat and you're sure that it's flat. So you would put that on top of the holder, and then turn on the camera, focus on the iris, and level it till you see the iris in the middle. For that, you will have to have the two uh, crosses on the center of the screen of your digital camera so you can actually put it exactly on the middle. Also, if you're using an advancer like the one from Valoi here, we could just put the advancer under the camera, use the mirror without a mask if you want, or a holder, and place it on top. You could also place the holder, of course, and level it like that. So you don't need to have one or the other. You just wanna make sure that wherever the film's gonna go through is parallel to the camera and for that you use the little mirror. When you're leveling with the mirror, make sure that you, if you want, you can lower the camera to see more of the center of the lens because you wanna focus on the iris and also you wanna overexpose sometimes to see inside the lens properly. You, then you can redo the settings for scanning. But we right now we're just leveling the camera which is very important. So I basically will level the camera here into the center and I'm gonna focus to see the center basically because it's hard to see. Also, we're using video light, so there's reflections all over the place, so this should not be your case if you're doing it at home. Once you've done the basic leveling with the camera or reproduction stand, if you're using a tripod to a tripod, you can always use the feet, in this case with the Valoi. They have rubber feet that are screwed, so you can screw them and do the fine adjustments with that. If you do not have a screw feet and you're using just a mask on its own, maybe if not possible with the camera and the stand you can always like wedge a little bit with maybe a piece of paper two pieces of paper to make it level uh, at the end the result is what's important it's how you get there is not exactly that important you just need to make it level and sturdy enough to scan 
a whole roll of film when you're doing that. The other part of the equipment that you need is a source of light. In this case, we're using a Relino uh, video light. And the important thing about this is that hopefully it's bright enough to give you a good shutter speed on your camera and also has a high CRI uh, for the color negatives and color positives. If you're shooting black and white and you're scanning it, you don't mind about the quality of the light because you just need light. If you are also using a source of light like a phone or a tablet, pixels might be present on your scans. So for that reason, you should use a diffuser. Velo has a diffuser that goes between the light and the film that will diffuse those pixels and not make them obvious when you're scanning. So now we grab our advancer. We put a source of light inside the advancer. We would put it under the camera. Of course, this should have been leveled after the fact. We're just doing a little demonstration. You would grab your film holder, in this case, we're using the 120 film holder. It's very important in the case of uh, the Valoi that you can read the Valoi letters from where the film's gonna be fed in. So now we're gonna add the duster for the Valoi, which is anti-static brushes to keep the dust at a minimum. That's one of the things that is important when you're digitizing with a digital camera, mirrorless camera, is that you don't have digital ice in software like you have with Epson scanners and so on. So you wanna keep your film as clean as possible and use a uh, duster anti-static brush before it uh, goes through the film holder. So we put the duster here. We put our holder for 120. And basically you have to read Veloy towards the duster. And then you would grab your film. In this case, we have 120 film, uh, six by six. We can also add the mask. Veloy has some masks to help mask out the light extra light that you might not need so we would put the mask first and then the holder and now we can put our film through the duster and one thing to make sure is you should be using gloves for using film this is a prototype film that we're using so we are not using uh, gloves also just in case even if you're using gloves to touch only the sides of the film don't put your finger on the middle of an image so you would f feed your film with your hand uh, and then you have to slowly start moving the knobs so it starts feeding the film. And basically you align for the first shot and you would be ready to take a picture. So for the Veloy, you wanna make sure that the O-rings are set properly in the axis onto the outer grooves in the case of 120 and the center and the middle grooves for 35. The middle ones are for 127, which will be coming later. But yeah, basically you wanna have them there. And then when you feed your film, you basically will start advancing. So it starts you know, pulling the film through the advancer and through the duster for scanning. Now we're gonna talk about the camera settings, which are quite important in this case, because you know, for scanning film, you wanna have some settings that you adjust and not the camera just does whatever automatic setting it decides to do. So for your camera settings, you do want to make sure you have uh, the ISO at native. So check out what I native ISO your camera has. And if not, try to put it at the lowest or closest to the lowest setting. The, in the aperture of the lens should be two to three stops below maximum aperture. In this case, we're using a 2.8 lens. So F5.6, F8 would be pretty good depending on the light source and it has enough light then you would be shooting in raw don't do jpegs please because you want to have flexibility in post which is one of the best things of shooting uh, scanning film with a digital camera then you want the white balance to be set on something fixed if you're shooting raw you can change that after the fact but if you have it in auto it might just start doing all kinds of crazy stuff depending on your negatives and then you want to have a remote possibly so you don't touch your camera when you're scanning and if you don't have a remote try to use a self timer for two seconds or even a remote on your phone, which most digital cameras nowadays do have. So now we're ready to focus on the film and also make sure that we have adjusted the height of the camera. As when we leveled the camera to the holder, we made sure to see the iris. Maybe the camera's too low, so we have to raise it. Do remember when you focus, sometimes there's focus breathing that will enlarge the image or make it smaller. So you will have to fiddle a little bit to get it on the right setting. If you're scanning something that won't be the native aspect ratio of your digital camera, you might want to either crop, like make a bigger shot and crop in like a six by six or stitch, which would mean that you would focus on a smaller patch of film, then advance it, 
take another shot with the same settings and stitch it in software in post. When you want to focus, you usually want to try manual focus and use your zoom into your digital camera so you can zoom into the negative. You could also use out of focus on your digital camera, but make sure that you have everything set up and no other lights that will maybe confuse the camera. Make sure when you see the image on your screen, if you have a tilty frippy screen, it's really useful. You can also tether your camera to a computer that's extremely useful for you know fine adjustments when you're scanning and then one of the things that most people oversee and are usually never said on videos on youtube about scanning is turn off any ambient lights you have of course film is a reflective media as you can see in the video and any light overhead or anything like that will give some weird cast on your negatives on your scans actually so make sure that you turn off all the lights. Just have the light from the light source here. You'll see enough, maybe a computer screen on the side will be okay. And if you do have any issues of any kind, Valoi did make a getting started guide. And at the very end of it, it has like issues with your scanning. So make sure that if you did buy a Valoi, this comes in the box, you read it, and this video would not be needed. But a lot of people don't read just like I do, or I don't. So do make sure that you turn off the lights and you have darkness. If not, you will get images with uh, patches of weird uh, colors on it. And we'll put a screenshot so you can see the difference with lights and without lights for this demonstration. Also, there'll be a second video showing the whole after we've scanned with our digital camera, how to uh, you know process the images, what are the best settings and so on, importing the images and all that, different software and so on. So yeah, make sure you check that second video. Uh, thanks to Valoi for collaborating with me in this video. Hope this helps people get better, you know, scans with a digital camera. A lot of people are confused if Epson scanners are better or digitizing is better. Of course, it's a hefty price point of getting everything, but if you already own a digital camera and a tripod, it's not that hard to get into digital scanning. Me, myself, I like this because it's a little faster and I can control it 100% when the scanner always does some interpretation and it's harder for me to get the right results. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, leave comments below because me and Valoi will probably be checking the comments and helping people you know, figure out their scanning solutions and get better scans. And remember, this is with Valoi, but you can use other systems. We are not trying to make it exclusive, but just recommend this because it's what we have here. Thanks and see you in the next one. Bye.